everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm the Legally Blind Bookworm, and today's video is the last of my bingo challenge. So with this video, I'm going to do my last two horizontal bingos, which will end up filling up the rest of my bingo card. So this will end up finishing my entire bingo card, and I have read the 24 books that fill in the bingo card. As always, the bingo card is described as each column going, hor uh, going vertically from left to right will be labeled with B, I, N, G, and O, and the rows going horizontally from left to right from the top to the bottom will be labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the upper left box is B1 and the lower right box is O5. As always, link down below, you will find all of the books for these two bingos um, labeled with the title, the author, the NLS catalog number, and the Goodread links for all of the books. You will also find the link to the blog that has all of the books for my entire bingo card. You will also find the link to my blog that will contain all of the blog posts, which will include all of the reading challenges and any of the other challenges or books blogs that I have done so far. You will also find the link to my Facebook and my Instagram. So let me show you my bingo. B1, an author's debut book. For this, I chose the book Rock Chick. So Rock Chick is the first book in the series by Kristen Ashley titled Rock Chick. So this was actually her debut book and I got introduced by Kristen Ashley with her other series that I found so far of the Dream Man series. So the Rock Chick series is a book series that follows a group of friends and their love interests throughout the entire series. One reason I do like these books is that as you go through the series, you don't lose contact with the first of the series. So the Rock Chick book includes Indy and Lee, which are kind of like a childhood romance that has gone into being a romance as an adult. Um, Indy definitely does love Lee from a long time ago and you end up finding some stuff about Lee that is kind of interesting. Um, Lee is a owner of an investigation company so he's kind of that little bit of a bad boy. I won a banned book. For this I chose the book Are You There God? It's Me Margaret. The interesting thing about the next book is I know I read this book as a child. So Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret was a book by Judy Bloom that I know I did read as a child. What was interesting about this book was that as I was searching for the category of a banned book, I ended up discovering that many of Judy Bloom's books were banned at one point or another at different points and different places around the United States. This actually kind of surprised me, but as I really thought about it, if Judy Bloom would have published these books in our day, they wouldn't have been so much of a big deal now as they were when we were younger. So Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret follows a young girl named Margaret, and basically she is in her preteens and going through all of the stages of life that happen as a preteen. She is dealing with the likes of boys, her friendships, her classmates, her personal problems, and she is also trying to find out if religion is for her. She's being torn from one to another. This is a really great book and it definitely does piece together a couple different pieces and parts about what kids really do go through and I think this was a realistic relationship in regards to all of those. So honestly, I did reread this because I did read this as a child probably in my teens and I didn't remember a ton about it. I remember just a little bit about it. It didn't disappoint me and I really did actually enjoy reading this book and I think I might end up picking up more of Judy Bloom's books. N1, a book referred to me. For this, I chose the book, The Book Thief. The Book Thief was a book that a friend of mine told me that she had read and it ended up being kind of interesting, so I ended up 
deciding to download it and to use it as the book that I, it was suggested by a friend. So the Book Thief was actually used a couple months ago in the Blind Audio Book Club on Facebook as well. So I decided that this might be a fun book to read. I didn't know anything about it going in, but it was a book I did enjoy. It is a fictitious historical fiction book that takes place around the Nazi Germany. And um, it is a different perspective on the whole war. This is the perspective kind of from a young girl whose family is not, I would say, for the Jewish, but not against the Jewish either. So you kind of get both sides going on. It definitely had a bit of a twist in regards to how it is written, but I definitely did enjoy reading this and learning a little bit more about that other side that you really don't hear a whole lot. G1, a book written 19 years before I was born. For this, I chose the book James and the Giant Peach. So when I decided to pick James and the Giant Peach for my reading bingo, I actually had it slated for a different spot. So I ended up reading it thinking it was for a different category. And then I ended up realizing that I actually had picked it for this particular category of it being written 19 years before I was born. So I didn't realize it had been printed and published that long ago. So James and the Giant Peach is a whimsical roll doll book that is fun to read and is one of those child books that I don't recall reading when I was a child. I do remember hearing about it and I do know that there's a movie as well. But honestly, I don't remember reading this book. So it was a whimsical fun book to just break up a bunch of my books in my reading challenge. Oh, one, my most recently acquired book. For this, I chose the book, My Brilliant Friend. So My Brilliant Friend did show up, I believe, in another bingo that I did, as it does fall into O1. So I believe I've talked about My Brilliant Friend before. So My Brilliant Friend is the first in a trilogy by Elena Ferrante. So this follows a group of girls in Italy, kind of the poor part of Italy, and it just is part of their life. It is a little bit of teenage romance and a little bit of um, just what went on back in Italy. Um, I do believe it was the 40s or the 50s when this one was supposed to take place. So it was just a little bit of what happened and it was a good book. I have not read the other two in the series, but they're definitely on my to read list. B2, a book I didn't get to in 2018. For this, I chose the book Bad Monkey. So Bad Monkey did show up, I believe, on my color coded challenge. And what Bad Monkey is, is Bad Monkey is a suspense kind of murder mystery with a little bit of romance built in. This had some humor, which did make it a lot of fun. I believe I actually read this in January, so I believe it's one of the older books that's on my list of my bingo card. Um, it is one of two books that follows the main character of Andrew, and it definitely was a lot of fun to read. I had some giggles in there, so I'm definitely looking forward to reading the next book and finding out if it still has the fun humor and the suspense that's in this book. I did like this book because where I kind of had a little bit of suspicion of what was going on and what was going to happen at the end of the book, it definitely didn't disappoint me and it was still a lot of fun to read. I, too, a book published in 2019. For this, I chose the book Playing for Keeps. Finding a book that was published in 2019 that I could download was actually on the harder side. What I ended up doing was I ended up searching the website where I download most of my books and just searching for 2019. I think it popped up about 15 books. And from there, what I ended up doing was I ended up just kind of reading over their genres and the authors and a little bit about the book and finding which book I wanted to read. So Playing for Keeps was published in 2019. What I ended up discovering that Playing for Keeps is the last book that was published in the Heartbreaker Bay series. So what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to read 
all of the books in the Heartbreaker Bay series before I could read Playing for Keeps, but that was okay. This was a fun series that was written by Jill Chavez, and I ended up discovering that I've actually read a couple more of her books, so I'm going to end up downloading the other books in that series so that I can enjoy it. These are fun, easy romances that just glued me in, and sometimes I just need a book like that to glue me in, and these definitely had that factor built in. They also had the factor where as you read the books, you do not lose contact with the first books in the series and the characters that go on, so you just keep hearing all about the rest of the people in the series. N2, a book with more than 219 pages. For this, I chose the book Blood Fury. So Blood Fury is a book that is in the Black Dagger Legacy series that is written by J.R. Ward. So the Black Dagger Legacy series follows J.R. Ward's more popular series of the Black Dagger Brotherhood. This is all about those vampires, and if you do end up reading the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, I would definitely end up suggesting you read the Black Dagger Legacy series. If you did want to read this book because you do like vampire books, I would suggest you read the Black Dagger Brotherhood series first because you will hear all about the other characters from the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. So this follows the trainees in the training center and just some romances that are just a lot of fun and all about those vampires. G2, a translated book. For this, I chose the book, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. So The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I actually heard about this book because there is a movie that was made off of this book but I've never actually watched the movie and as I was looking for translated books it is also a translated book so um, it just kind of fit into a lot of the different categories so I ended up deciding I wanted to read it. This is a suspense murder mystery kind of a thing. Um, it has a little bit of romance. There are some triggers in this so I'm going to put up my trigger warning. Um, there are some triggers in regards to sexual abuse and things like that, so be warned if you're very sensitive in regards to those. Um, I did enjoy this. This is the first in the series, so I'm probably going to end up reading the rest of the series. I have not downloaded any of the books yet, but I probably will. Um, this was a suspense book that, unfortunately, I kind of had a feeling of what the ending was going to be, but it didn't disappoint me in regards to the way it was written and I didn't want to stop reading it so I did end up finding out the ending which had some twists and turns as it went but it was a really good book and I'm debating on whether I'm going to end up watching the movie or not. Um, it is all depending on if I can get it yet and so far I can't but um, if I end up doing it I will do a um, comparison of the movie and the book. O2, an award-winning book. For this, I chose the book Where the Sidewalk Ends. So Where the Sidewalk Ends is another book from my childhood. I did own a copy of this as a child, and I know I've read it um, a number of times, and actually my daughter does own a copy of Where the Sidewalk Ends. Now, as I was looking at this, I decided this would be a fun read because I did end up using it on my color-coded challenge as well. Um, this was a fun book of short stories and poems and things like that. So there's my bingo. I have finished the bingo card, all 24 books, so make sure you watch for the next video which will contain all 24 books and what slot they ended up filling up. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to end up doing another bingo challenge. It all depends on if I end up finding a bingo card that I do end up liking. I have some other challenges going on, so make sure you check back in to find out what are my most recent challenges and keep on reading. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring that bell for notifications.